Torsten Hussein was born on the 1st of March 1916 in the city of Lund in southern Sweden. He was the oldest of four children and has two younger sisters and a younger brother. His mother worked as a telegraphist before marrying and his father ran his own timber firm and was director of a sawmill close to Växjö in southern Sweden. At the age of six, Torsten started primary school and he then proceeded to the municipal middle school at Alvesta. He wasn't very satisfied with the education at the time. They, uh, they, I didn't have very good teachers and, uh, yeah, the uh, pedagogical climate was not very, very promoting in my case. It was then in the gymnasium from 16 to 19 that I began to develop. And I came then to Lund in southern Sweden, the University of Lund, where I was very productive in terms of what came out of my studies. Your uh, doctoral dissertation dealt with uh, uh, the adolescence. Yeah, yeah, it dealt with a late adolescent problem. These, these were young people who I had tested very thoroughly, uh, 1,000 uh, individuals uh, who were between 16 and 20 years old. After finishing his dissertation in 1944, the general staff of the Swedish Armed Forces hired Torsten as an expert to establish a system of psychological tests for military selection and specialization. This unit had offices in a former palace and he became one of the first military psychologists in Sweden. In 1953, Torsten became professor of educational psychology at Stockholm College, which became Stockholm University in 1960. Three years later, Torsten was called upon to be a professor at the School of Education in Stockholm, the first in Sweden, where he stayed for 15 years. He then became the chair of a new department of international and comparative education at Stockholm University. During this time, Torsten also wrote many books, articles and reports. You have a very long list of publications and uh, is there one or some of these studies that you find or consider more important than others that you want to, to emphasize or that you have... Uh... Well, uh, some of them have uh, stand the, the, the time, so to speak. I have one book on twins, for instance, that came out in 19... Uh, uh, early 1950s, um, half a century ago, uh, which was uh, data from the military conscriptions. So they, I had uh, practically all the twins in four or five age cohorts. And that played an important role as a, a contribution to the methodological uh, development of twin studies. But then later on I started with comparative studies in education and that was uh, in the in the uh, in the 60s um, and uh, wrote several books on comparative studies. How was the, this step from from the twin study and the army work on to the comparative uh, uh, perspective? Well, it had to do with the fact that uh, I was invited uh, to give, uh, con uh, give lectures at the international meetings that were conducted by uh, various organizations in psychology. And I got interested. I had the, uh, the habit of uh, writing a few pages every day. So I don't know how many thousand pages I wrote. And uh, the, 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 the bulk of what was produced was uh, published in either in journals or in book form or put together as a, 
a essays. All in all, I have been, I don't know how many times at Stanford, but uh, at two occasions I was there for a full year at the Center for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences, which is close to Stanford University. And then I have been there also as a visiting professor at the university itself. And uh, I used to visit Stanford practically every year in the 70s and 80s. And uh, there are other places in the US. The first university where I was spending a, a longer period as a visiting professor was Chicago, University of Chicago, 1959. I was working then with Theodor Schultz, who then later on got the Nobel Prize, and not thanks to his cooperation with me, but uh, <laughs> we had quite a lot to do with each other. Yes. University of Hawaii, half a year. In addition to numerous visits to universities in the United States, Torsten spent time in Berlin and went to Asia many times. Here we see him lecturing at East China Normal University in 2000. Why are you still working? Yeah, I cannot stop working, you know. <laughs> I cannot stop. Being somewhat of a globetrotter, Torsten became interested in international and comparative studies of education and was one of the founders of the International Association for the Evaluation of Educational Achievement. Um, do you remember where it started? Uh, where this, this kind of comparative study started? I think there were discussions in Hamburg at the... Uh, at the, uh, uh, the UNESCO, Inter Inter UNESCO Institute for Studies and Education, yeah. And I think there were people uh, on both sides of, of the Atlantic, interested in this. Oh yes, yes. The the institute in Hamburg played an important role in getting IEA started. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, coming back to UNESCO, I was chairman of the board of the International Institute for Education Planning in Paris. Mm -hmm. And the most, perhaps the most important thing. In, in the, the 60s and 70s uh, was, of course, the, the um, international study of achievement. And the first was uh, the, the in, mathematics. In mathematics, yeah. And, and why did it start with mathematics? Yeah, it was easier to measure achievements in mathematics than in, in most other school subjects. This was published in, in 67, I see. Mm -hmm. And, and um, uh, there were 12 countries participating. In 12 countries, yeah. 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 And, and uh, I think this was a success. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. It was a big success. I uh, took the chair in education here in 53. Mm -hmm. at uh, Stockholm University. But uh, they had, at the same time, there was a decision by the parliament to start a, a new school of education, mm -hmm. which for teacher training, mm -hmm. which was started a year or two later. And that was actually where you started some of, of your a real yeah. international career. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And and uh, but I, I had the feeling that that uh, this became. You were the chairman of IA. I was chairman of IA for many years. Mm -hmm. And and after a while, they they want the the state wanted to give you a new professorship. Yeah. At Stockholm University. Yeah. Yes, that's and, right. And that was the when the Institute of International Education was founded. Yeah, that, that's right. 1971, I think we mm -hmm. we started the Institute of International Education. Torsten was the first chair of the Institute of International Education at Stockholm University, and during his years as professor, he had 38 doctoral students. Torsten Hussein has played an important role for education all over the world. His academic career in Sweden and internationally is unique. 
He was active for more than 60 years and was influential in international organizations such as the OECD and UNESCO, serving as the chair of the UNESCO Institute for Educational Planning in Paris for 10 years. He has written more than 50 books translated into 15 languages and served as the editor-in-chief of the International Encyclopedia of Education. <laughs> 